Chapter 4 Christ Will Not Quench the Smoking Flax The second observation concerning the weak and small beginnings of grace is that Christ will not quench the smoking flax. This is so for two principal reasons. First, because this spark is from heaven. It is his own. It is kindled by his own spirit. And secondly, it tends to the glory of his powerful grace in his children, that he preserves light in the midst of darkness, a spark in the midst of the swelling waters of corruption. The least spark of grace is precious. There is an especial blessing in that little spark. As the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, Destroy it not, for a blessing is in it, so will I do for my servants' sakes. Isaiah 65, 8 We see how our Savior Christ bore with Thomas in his doubting, John twenty twenty seven, and with the two disciples that went to Emmaus, who wavered as to whether he came to redeem Israel or not. Luke twenty four twenty one. He quenched not that little light in Peter, which was smothered. Peter denied him, but he denied not Peter. Luke twenty two sixty one. If thou wilt, thou canst, said one poor man in the gospel. Matthew 8, 2. If thou canst do anything, said another. Mark nine twenty two. Both were smoking flax. Neither of them was quenched. If Christ had stood upon his own greatness, he would have rejected him that came with his if. But Christ answers his if with a gracious and absolute grant, I will, be thou clean. The woman that was diseased with an issue did but touch with a trembling hand, and but the hem of his garment, and yet she went away both healed and comforted. In the seven churches, Revelation 2 and 3, we see that Christ acknowledges and cherishes anything that was good in them. Because the disciples slept due to infirmity, being oppressed with grief, our Savior Christ frames a comfortable excuse for them. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Matthew twenty six forty one. If Christ should not be merciful, he would miss of his own ends. There is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. Psalm one thirty four. Now all are welcome to come under that banner of love which he spreads over his own. Unto thee shall all flesh come. Psalm 65, 2. He uses moderation and care, lest the spirit should fail before him, and the souls which he hath made. Isaiah fifty seven sixteen. Christ's heart yearned, the text says, when he saw the people without meat, lest they faint in the way. Matthew fifteen thirty two. Much more will he have regard for the preventing of our spiritual faintings. Support the weak. Here see the opposite dispositions in the holy nature of Christ and the impure nature of man. Man, for a little smoke, will quench the light. Christ, we see, ever cherishes even the least beginnings. How he bore with the many imperfections of his poor disciples. If he did sharply check them, it was in love and that they might shine the brighter. Can we have a better pattern to follow than this from him by whom we hope to be saved? We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. Romans 15.1 I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. 1 Corinthians 9.22 Oh, that this gaining and winning disposition were more in many! Many, so far as in us lies, are lost for want of encouragement. See how that faithful fisher of men, the Apostle Paul, labors to catch his judge. I know that thou believest the prophets, Acts twenty six twenty seven, and then wishes him all saving good, but not bonds. He might have added them too, but he would not discourage one that responded. He would therefore wish Agrippa only that which was good in religion. How careful was our blessed Saviour of little ones, that they might not be offended! How he defends his disciples from malicious imputations of the Pharisees! How careful not to put new wine into old vessels! Matthew 9.17 Not to alienate new beginners with the austerities of religion, as some do indiscreetly. Oh, says he, they shall have time to fast when I am gone, and strength to fast when the Holy Ghost has come upon them. 
It is not the best way to assail young beginners with minor matters, but to show them a more excellent way and train them in fundamental points. Then other things will not gain credence with them. It is not amiss to conceal their defects, to excuse some failings, to commend their performances, to encourage their progress, to remove all difficulties out of their way, to help them in every way to bear the yoke of religion with greater ease, to bring them to love God and His service, lest they acquire a distaste for it before they know it. For the most part we see that Christ plants in young beginners a love which we call their first love, Revelation 2, 4, to carry them through their profession with more delight, and does not expose them to crosses before they have gathered strength, as we bring on young plants and fence them from the weather until they be rooted. Mercy to others should move us to deny ourselves in our liberties oftentimes, in case of offending weak ones. It is the little ones that are offended. Matthew 18.6. The weakest are most ready to think themselves despised. Therefore we should be most careful to give them satisfaction. It would be a good contest amongst Christians, one to labor to give no offense, and the other to labor to take none. The best men are severe to themselves, tender over others. Yet people should not tire and wear out the patience of others nor should the weaker so far demand moderation from others as to rely upon their indulgence, and so to rest in their own infirmities, with danger to their own souls and scandal to the church. Neither must they despise the gifts of God in others, which grace teaches to honor wheresoever they are found, but know their parts and place, and not undertake anything above their measure, which may make their persons and their case obnoxious to scorn. When blindness and boldness, ignorance and arrogance, weakness and willfulness meet together in men, it renders them odious to God, burdensome in society, dangerous in their counsels, disturbers of better purposes, intractable and incapable of better direction, miserable in the issue. Where Christ shows his gracious power in weakness, he does it by letting men understand themselves so far as to breed humility and magnify God's love to such as they are. He does it as a preservative against discouragements from weakness, to bring men into a less distance from grace, as an advantage to poverty of spirit, rather than greatness of condition and parts, which yield to corrupt nature fuel for pride. Christ refuses none for weakness of parts, that none should be discouraged, but accepts none for greatness, that none should be lifted up, with that which is of so little reckoning with God. It is no great matter how dull the scholar be when Christ takes upon him to be the teacher, who, as he prescribes what to understand, so he gives understanding itself, even to the simplest. The church suffers much from weak ones, therefore we may assert our liberty to deal with them, though mildly, yet oftentimes directly. The scope of true love is to make the party better, which concealment oftentimes hinders. With some, a spirit of meekness prevails most, but with some, a rod. Some must be pulled out of the fire, Jude 23, with violence, and they will bless God for us in the day of their visitation. We see that our Savior multiplies woe upon woe when he has to deal with hard-hearted hypocrites, Matthew 23:13. For hypocrites need stronger conviction than gross sinners, because their will is bad, and therefore usually their conversion is violent. A hard knot must have an answerable wedge, else, in a cruel pity, we betray their souls. A sharp reproof sometimes is a precious pearl and a sweet balm. The wounds of secure sinners will not be healed with sweet words. The Holy Ghost came as well in fiery tongues as in the likeness of a dove, and the same Holy Spirit will vouchsafe a spirit of prudence and discretion, which is the salt to season all our words and actions. And such wisdom will teach us to speak a word in season, Isaiah 50, 4, both to the weary and likewise to the secure soul. And indeed, he has need of the tongue of the learned, that shall either raise up or cast down though in this place I speak of mildness towards those that are weak and are sensible of it. These we must bring on gently and drive softly, 
as Jacob did his cattle. Genesis 33:14, According to their pace, and as his children were able to endure. Weak Christians are like glasses which are hurt with the least violent usage, but if gently handled will continue a long time. This honor of gentle use we are to give to the weaker vessels, 1 Peter 3, 7, by which we shall both preserve them and likewise make them useful to the church and ourselves. In diseased bodies, if all ill humors be purged out, you shall purge life and all away. Therefore, though God says that he will refine them as silver is refined, Zechariah 13:9, yet he said he had refined thee, but not with silver, Isaiah 48:10, that is, not so exactly as that no dross remains, for he has respect to our weakness. Perfect refining is for another world, for the world of the souls of perfect men.